In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the pH of a solution of a polyprotic acid. Until now, uh, the general case for an acid has been like this. We have a uh, generic name HA that dissociates into H plus and the conjugate base A minus. And uh, while that works well for most acid acids, there are uh, acids that contain more than one proton. Okay, like for example, sulfuric acid or carbonic acid. So in that case, uh, uh, this placeholding expression for an acid dissociation does not work very well. Instead, we have to use another one, which is this one. Okay, so if you have uh, two protons, this will be a diprotic acid, then you're going to have uh, something like this. Okay, so this will be an aqueous solution generating a proton, and then the conjugate base will be uh, HA minus right here. Right? Uh, the interesting thing about these uh, polyprotic acids is that now uh, the conjugate base of the first equilibrium can also act as an acid. Okay? And that uh, introduces a little bit of complexity into the system. Right? So notice that this uh, HA-, minus, which is the conjugate base of the first equilibrium, can also be an acid, right? because that, acid, this, that proton is also uh, an acid proton. It can dissociate. Right, so you have now two equilibria uh, that you have to deal with. Right, notice that it, uh, this is for the case of a diprotic acid, but if you had uh, uh, something like a phosphoric acid with three protons, then you will have one more equilibrium uh, to, to uh, reckon with. Right, so it turns out that each one of these equilibrium have will have their own equilibrium constants. Right, so uh, for this particular equilibrium, we have that uh, there will be a case of a one and this one refers to the first equilibrium, which will have an expression as H plus HA minus, and then over the concentration of HA, right? That will be uh, the first acid dissociation constant. And then you'll have a Ka sub 2 for the second equilibrium, right? And uh, that will be concentration of protons times the concentration of A2 minus over HA minus. And uh, something that is important about these polyprotic acids is that uh, you have various sources of protons. That is that the first equilibrium generates protons, but so does the second equilibrium as well. Right? So when you're trying to calculate the pH of the solution, uh, you're going to have to take into consideration all of the sources of protons. Right? So we will need to calculate how many protons are coming from this equilibrium, and then that equilibrium, and if you had a triprotic acid, there will be a third equilibrium, and so forth. Okay, so you can see how these problems are a little bit more, more difficult and more interesting as well uh, than a general uh, strong or weak acid pH calculation. All right, so let's illustrate this concept with uh, a calculation of a pH for carbonic acid, okay, which is a diprotic acid. All right, so let's uh, uh, see how that works. Carbonic acid is going to have uh, this formula. All right, and we're going to draw uh, both uh, equilibrium acid dissociation, dissociation reactions. So this is the first one, the aqueous uh, to generate uh, protons, and then uh, hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate. Then uh, the second one will be uh, HCO3 minus bicarbonate dissociating to generate protons in aqueous solution, and then uh, carbonate ions. Great. All right, so we know the Ka uh, sub 1 and A sub 2 for these uh, two processes. The A sub 1 uh, happens to have a value of uh, 4.3 10 to the minus 7, and then K sub A2, K sub A1, K sub A2, uh, has a value of 4.8, 10 to the minus 11. All right, so we're going to start with a 0.1 molar solution of carbonic acid, and the goal of the problem is to calculate the pH of this solution. Again, the main challenge is to consider that we're going to have protons coming from the first equilibrium and also for the second. Right, so here's how the strategy of the problem works. Uh, in order to calculate the protons coming from the first equilibrium, you simply have to employ an ice diagram 
uh, for that equilibrium. We have the initial concentration, we can calculate the concentrations of the equilibrium. That's fine. Now for the second equilibrium, you actually need to know what the concentration of that uh, hydrogen carbonate is in order to be able to write the ice diagram, right? So you cannot write the ice diagram directly here because you, don't, you have no idea what the concentration of bicarbonate is. Instead, you're gonna have to use the one that comes from the first equilibrium uh, before you can solve the second ice diagram. From both the ice diagrams, we'll get the total concentration of protons, and then uh, we'll be, we will be able to calculate the pH. All right, so let's go step by step. Uh, that's the ice diagram for the first equilibrium. We don't have any protons initially or uh, bicarbonate. The change will be minus x, 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 and then the concentrations at equilibrium will be 0 0.1 minus x, then x, and then x. All right, so we come to the uh, acid dissociation constant, okay, which is uh, Ka sub 1 is equal to concentration of protons times concentration of bicarbonate over the concentration of carbonic acid. And again, notice that that is going to be equal to x squared 0 0.1 minus x. Okay, and this is going to be equal to this very, very small value. So uh, what we're going to do is assume that this is going to be about the same as 0 0.1 minus x, uh, 0 0.1. We expect this x to be very small, and therefore you should be able to neglect it with respect to uh, 0 0.1, and then make this equal to the k of 1, which is 4.3, 10 to the minus 7. Okay, so when you do that, you find that the uh, resulting uh, x is 2.1, 10 to the minus 4. Okay, notice that this number is much more than 5% of that one, so the approximation that we have invoked uh, in this step is actually valid. Okay, great, so uh, with these numbers, we can then uh, come out and calculate what the concentrations of protons and hydrocarbonate are at equilibrium. Notice that that x is now uh, 2.1 10 to the minus 4 for each. And this is important. Now, if uh, this was a monoprotic acid, our problem will be finished, right? Because we can take this uh, concentration of protons and calculate the pH, and that's that. But we're not done in this problem. That is that now you have a non-negligible amount of hydrogen carbonate that might undergo a second dissociation, further contributing protons to the solution. And we'd like to calculate exactly how many protons are coming from this second equilibrium uh, because the pH should be lower than considering only the first equilibrium. Okay, so let's uh, let's see how that works. That is that we have to draw here a second ice diagram for this second dissociation, but the initial concentration of hydrogen carbonate is what, what comes from the first equilibrium, right? So we have here 2.1, 10 to the minus four. And then uh, the initial concentration of carbon ions is zero. There's no carbon ions to start with, but notice that the initial concentration of the protons is not zero. Right, we have protons from the first equilibrium, so we have to take that into consideration as well. 2.1, 10 to the minus 4 molar. Okay, so uh, we now uh, see what the change should, should, uh, should be. So this will dissociate a little bit to generate more protons and then uh, carbonate. Uh, so that will increase by a factor of plus x, uh, or we can actually call it y to make sure that we differentiate it with respect to the first um, equilibrium. It really doesn't matter what you call the variable and the weight plus y. And then the concentrations at equilibrium will be 2.1, 10 to the minus 4, minus y. 2.1, 10 to the minus 4, plus y, and then y. Okay, great, so then we're ready to uh, plug these values into the equilibrium constant for the second dissociation, Ka sub 2, and see what the value of y is. Again, uh, we do Ka sub 2 is going to be equal to the concentration of protons at equilibrium times the concentration of carbonate ions over the concentration of hydrogen carbonate. All right, and we'll take these values, and they are going to be 2.1, 10 to the minus 4 plus y multiplied by y over 2.1 10 to the minus 4 minus y. 
and um, this is going to be equal to k sub 2, which has a very, very small value. So much as before, what we can do then is neglect, because this y is going to be very, very small. Notice that this uh, value of the equilibrium constant is ridiculously small, very, very small. That means that this equilibrium is going to be displaced to the left, right? There's going to be very little uh, dissociation. Again, what that means is that this y is going to be quite small. So our approximation is going to be to neglect it both in the numerator, I mean the denominator, the, the, uh, the rigor of the approximation is exactly the same because the numbers that you're comparing it against are exactly the same, right? So uh, when we do that, uh, the, res the result of that approximation is going to be a trivial expression to solve, right? 2.1 10 to the minus 4 times y over 2.1 uh, 10 to the minus 4. And this has to be equal to uh, the k sub 2, which in this case is 4.8. 10 to the minus 11. Okay, so notice that these factors cancel, and y is, in this particular case, exactly identical to uh, the dissociation constant for the second equilibrium, which is very small, 4.8 to the minus 11. Okay, so uh, we're very close to the end now. Notice that uh, to calculate the pH, we need to calculate what the concentration of protons is uh, emerging from the second equilibrium, which is that number. I notice that uh, simply we have to take the concentration of protons coming from the first equilibrium and add what comes from the second. But in this particular case, uh, the concentration of protons coming from the second equilibrium is about seven orders of magnitude uh, smaller than, than the first, right? So that's one more than one millionth of a time smaller, so we can completely neglect it. And what this tells you right away is that, well, for the case of carbonic acid, uh, the effect of the second equilibrium is negligible. Right, the pH is solely dictated by uh, the protons coming from the first equilibrium. Okay, so again, this is exactly the same thing as uh, 2.1 10 to the minus uh, 4, and then the pH is just going to be the minus based on logarithm of 2.1 10 to the minus 4, which happens to be 3.68. Okay, and again, this is uh, uh, solely uh, governed in this particular case uh, by the first equilibrium. Now, this is not a general uh, result. For example, if you were to calculate uh, the, constant, the pH of a solution of sulfuric acid, which also has two protons, it turns that the second equilibrium has a non-negligible contribution to the pH at reasonable initial concentrations. Okay, so what we've done in this problem is just laid out a general foundation that can, can be applied to any polyprotic acid, uh, and then uh, you can calculate the pH of, of any of those systems. Right, so uh, just to summarize, this video has uh, uh, introduced a way to calculate the pH of a solution of a polyprotic acid. And then we've used uh, an example to illustrate this, which has been the calculation of the, of the pH of carbonic acid.